Hey everyone, Vinayak here. I have with me here the Creality Ender 3 3D printer which I have been using for quite some time now. It has a 8-bit controller within and uh, this generally controls the processing of the G-code and also the stepper motors. But I found that there is an upgrade to a 32-bit controller. So I am going to be upgrading this now. Here is the SKR Mini E3. I purchased this off Biku Victory Tech's website. It's been sitting on the shelf since mid-January. At last I got around to installing it. We have the Victory Tech logo on the box. Opening it up, we have heat sinks for the server controllers, the main SKR Mini E3 controller board, a rubber ducky. Victory Tech places a rubber ducky in each order, just a fun add-on, nothing to do with the actual product and the USB-A to USB-B cable to flash the firmware, if necessary. Here's the board. It has the same form factor as the Ender 3's controller board. The Creality board included with the printer has a dated 8-bit processor. It can't always keep up with the complex G-codes, which in reality I have no problems with, but one area this controller helps is with the TMC2209 stepper drivers, which quieten the stepper motors substantially. This board also has the Marlin 2.0 firmware. Just replace the existing board, turn on the printer and you're ready to start printing. So why upgrade? Well, the 8-bit boards could handle straight lines very well, but when it comes to curved designs, the board needed more processing power, which it cannot process the data fast enough and we have artifacting and degradation in the object shape. And with 32-bit boards such as the SKR Mini E3 becoming more affordable, it becomes a no-brainer. Before we can install the board, we need to remove the existing controller board, which is the Creality 3D version 1.1.4 board. To remove the older board, we need to open up the case cover using the M4 Allen key provided with the printer. There are three bolts holding down the top plate, two in the front and one in the rear, which is hidden under the bed. You will need to move the bed forward to access it. You could use the Allen key horizontally, but this method gives me more torque for easy removal. Once done, we can remove the top cover, being careful that you don't damage the fan. Unplug the fan header of the board so that you can place the cover safely aside. Now we need to unplug all the headers. The good part is that the headers are the same on the new SKR Mini S3 board. I know I seem to be blocking the view, but it's just me unplugging the headers. My printer has the headers hot glued down. So if yours is too, be extra careful pulling them apart. Now for the wire block connectors. These are generally block headers with screws used to hold down the wires within. Before you unscrew the wires, it's best to take a photograph of the connections. Now we can proceed to unscrew the wires from the block. There are two sections. This block connector has the hot end fans, the bed power and the hot end power. The one on the end of the board is the main power. Now that we have all the headers and wires disconnected, we can unscrew the bolts holding down the board. There are 4 in total, 3 in the corners and 1 in the center. I almost missed the one in the center and was worried why the board was not popping off. Once done, I could just remove it easily. So here's how the boards look next to each other. Similar in design as it has to be installed in the same case. The one in black is the new SKR Mini E3 and the green one is the Creality 3D board. Nothing much to see on the back. There are four aluminium heat sinks provided. I would suggest installing them first before placing the board in the case. Peel off the tape below and stick them onto the controller. These are four in a line. Stick them and now you are ready to install the board. Being the same form factor and the wiring also being the same, it's easy to install the board into the case. Before we install the board inside, it's best to finish the wiring. I would suggest the main power first as it is at the rear of the board and won't be accessible once it's installed. Red to the right and black to the left. Then the remaining wires to the bigger terminal header, we start with the red and black 18 gauge wires for the hot end fans. After that we have the 14 gauge wires for the bed power 
and the next two more 14 gauge wires for the hot end power. Here's a tip. The larger the number, the thinner the wire. So 18 gauge wires are actually thinner than 14 gauge wires. There are two more wires remaining which are the hot end power and are either both white or red. I have the red ones and these are non-polarized so it can be connected either way. I was really worried about this set. Attach them and next attach the fans. The fan with the blue and yellow wires are connected to fan 0 and the case fan which is red and black is connected to fan 1. All the other cables are the same as the original board. Just connect each of the headers and also the LCD ribbon cable and we are done. Now to install the board back into the case. Use the same bolts from before to secure the board into the case. Now that we have the board secured, before we put the cover back on, we should do a test run. The SKR Mini E3 comes with Marlin 2.0 firmware pre-flashed, so no need to flash the firmware ourselves. Moment of truth. Turn the printer on and... We are putting into the Marlin firmware. Cool. Let's just test if everything was wired properly. Let's set the bed temperature to maybe 40 degrees. Seems to be warming up, so it's working. Auto home also seems to be working correctly. Let's try a test print. Wow, I can't hear the servo motors at all. It's just so quiet. So now that we have tested it, let's close up the case. It should take around 10 to 15 minutes to change the boards and the benefits to upgrading are just wonderful. The printer is so quiet now while printing that we don't even know if it's on or not. Support for probes such as the BL touch and the filament runout protection are also available and we can add these sensors easily in future as it's supported on the board and also on the firmware. To add the features though, we will need to download and customize and flash the firmware to support the new features. I'm quite happy that the installation went without a hitch and the printer is back printing ASAP. There are stories of the firmware and the board not being up to date. So if you are having problems, check the firmware on the printer and on the JIT repository. If it's old, try compiling and flashing the new firmware. The firmware JIT can be found in the link below and in the same is also available in the video description. I found that the firmware was not the latest on my board but was only a few months older than the latest on GitHub. You can download the firmware, copy to your micro SD card and when you power on the machine it will start flashing the firmware automatically. You can check the version on the printer in the printer all information option. So I hope you like the video, make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the bell icon to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thank you for watching and happy 3D printing.